Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Okay, so who do I introduce first? Kadara <laughs> Hamed is our guest co-host this morning. Welcome to the show. Yay! She's a renowned journalist, and it's, we're so happy to have you in our midst I'm so today. I'm honored that you Thank thought you. I should be here. <laughs> and Nima is supposed to be here, but Mary, Mary always stands in her. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for hanging yes. with us. Yes. Uh, until at least Nima gets here, because she's coming from her papa. We also have to get now, and now Nima has to always have a backup, because she's coming from her papa. That's a terrible situation, but mm. thank you always for coming whenever we ask you to. And it's our amazing audience. Hello. Thank you for coming. I have to acknowledge Mr. Daniel. Mr. Daniel invited <laughs> us. Mr. Daniel is our faith, one of our faithful um, um, audience members, and he's been here from the beginning. And wow. he invited us. His father was being honored last weekend. He wanted us to be there. He comes, he's, I mean, he's such a kind person, gives us gifts, remembers our birthdays. He's such a nice gentleman. He wanted us to be there. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it. So many things tied us up. I mean, we really actually wanted to be there, but unfortunately, we couldn't. But thank you so much for inviting us. We appreciate you. And it's our birthday. I want our audience. Happy birthday, Ma. Please rise. Let us acknowledge you. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure having you on our show. Thank you so much. So, Topsy, how are you doing? I'm good. In five so, seconds. the rain just went, you know, it just like. When, when, when it rains in Lagos, everywhere it gets shut down. down, you know. So I'm a kid, like, I don't like rain. I ask them that, you like rain. Rain is good. We need rain in the world for plants to grow because they just kind of associate rain now with everything right. getting disrupted. But rain yeah. is a blessing. Life of Lagos, see it. a Lagosian child. Yes. <laughs> rain is a blessing. Mary, as much as the problem is not the rain. It's our road. Flooding. Thank, Thank you. Flooding. Yeah. The drainage. Thank you. So the rains will come, but yes. the drainage must be cleared and the yes. roads must be fixed. Yes. How are you doing, Mary? I'm doing very well. Thank we know you've you. had breakfast. We know you're doing well. Uh, I had pasta. <laughs> we know, I know and you. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're doing well. <laughs> Good to have you on the show. Thank so, Kadera, tell our audience something about you that we don't know, something interesting. Oh, God. Um, I have a 21 year old son and an 18 year old daughter. Gee, oh, wow. that's, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> you would never know. Because yeah. I, I keep them off. I keep my family off social oh. media. So oh, wow. Not, not many nice. people. Yeah. Yeah. Not many I wanted to ask an that. ignorant question, but I won't ask it. It's because it's ignorant. <laughs> but let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The punch. Labor attacks federal government over $100 billion withheld by the IOCs, that's in international oil companies. Picture here Lagos traffic offenders sent to 100 day community service. Six killed in Lagos communities flawed. Hoodlums who burnt Ibadan school will be jailed, says Oyo. Three Nigerians injured in fresh South African xenophobic attacks. Corrupt Nigerians exposing, opposing NDDC probe, says Akpabio. NFIU seeks reduction in one trillion naira CBN annual budget. And MENA forfeits 23 houses to federal government ahead of arraignment. Finally, ASU's opposition to IPPIS endorsement of corruption, says federal government. All right, so I know we hardly read papers this morning because of the time issue, but um, I know the, the major headline. Uh, Lebo is saying, according to Waba, he was actually saying that, why are we going cap in hand to the World Bank when the IOCs are actually owing us about $100 billion? Um, so I, that, that's pretty much what I'm the story is. I'm with what the Labour is doing, because we've been asking that the Labour shouldn't just be advocating for how to get the money out of the system, but now they are preferring beyond just asking and demanding for money. So they should, do, they should investigate other places where Nigerians, we have money stuck somewhere, and then and maybe then that the, will And then the traffic offenders in Lagos, I don't know what's that, 100? Yeah, oh, fantastic. Right. Lagos traffic offenders sent to 100-day community service. Hmm. Yeah, so apparently, uh, the, the, the government has been talking about people being punished for traffic offense. Mm -hmm. And finally, something has been done about that. As a matter of fact, uh, several motorcycles were impounded. Uh, wow. They've actually been impounded over a period of time. Okay. Uh, however, uh, only about uh, just a few people were actually punished, so to speak. 
uh, Andre Day's community service and fines what ranging from fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. Because 000. You, can't, you can't really find it. If they don't do it, can you? Can you? You sweep over it. They don't do it. Highway, How would you know LD. that I'm doing it or I'm not doing it? Mm. Well, you no. have people that will monitor you to ensure you you, you do right. it. I, I used to think it was a, a fast, but right. it was even in a recent movie where some wealthy person had to do it. So oh, really? I Nigeria? believe that yeah, in Nigeria. Oh. So I want to believe it's either they are trying to project it oh, so yeah, people yeah. can do it, nice. or it's actually, actually happening. I actually think the punishment for traffic of fences should be slightly um, higher. Mm. I drive myself in Lagos. Mm. And so um, I am a victim of people try driving against traffic. Right. I'm right. a victim of you know people just breaking the law. Right. Mm. And I think by and large, we're very good at criticizing our leaders uh, around right. impunity. Yeah. But we want to also have impunity when it's convenient for exactly. us. Totally. So I, I actually think um, right. this should be commended. It's a, it's a good yeah. move because Lagos is crazy enough right. <laughs> without people Take, you know, one yeah, taking one yeah. yeah. and breaking the laws. OK, traffic. moving on now to Daily Sun. South okay. Africans renew attacks on Nigerians in Joe 4. Mm. Premises of uh, businesses actually burnt. On each inferno, 2,000 traders affected, says Nema. Seven feared dead in Cross River cult clash. Court orders temporary forfeiture of Minas 23 houses to federal government. Mm -hmm. And FG declares emergency on Enugu Airport. The emergency there just means that. Um, they're going to fix it faster. Yeah. No, they are really looking at, well, well, they've, they've shot it down, yes. haven't they, for yes. a few they're weeks, and they're it. saying that yeah. they're fixing the I think runway. the DJ, I'm not sure who was talking, he was saying that he was going to be relocating his office to Enugu and waiting, waiting the 10 billion that, uh, that, that our president had actually promised for mm. them to fix mm -hmm. Enugu. Yeah. That he's going to be taking it serious because at the same time when they wanted to fix the Inamde Azikwe in Abuja, mm. he relocated his office. So he's very, very serious about this and they're going to fix their state, they are declaring a state of emergency. It's long of a deal. Two other stories in that I want to take. One, the seven fair in Cross River is a major crisis mm -hmm. um, happening within um, cro a Cross River community, um, Okudi, I think. Right. Okudi should be the right th the thing. And it is around Cross River University of Technology. Three final year students died. Oh, mm -hmm. And it is a cultist and community clash. Mm -hmm. And it's been ongoing for a while. Right now, it's seven dead, three final year students in the school killed. Oh, and I think that the, the, the state government needs to step on this and find a way to bring peace into that community because mm -hmm. that has been ongoing. Right. Also, um, another sad story, follow up on what is happening in Onicha. Onicha. Mm -hmm. In that, they said 22,000 people were affected, that they are 50, you know, they have like these four story buildings. Mm -hmm. If you've been to Onicha, the, the buildings are really like high yeah. and they all have shops. So, and they said 50 buildings got raised in the fire, okay. so about 2,000 people. But Nima, Nima also affected. said that the 2,000 is an estimate, that is not mm. a comprehensive uh, figure yet because mm. the community is still angry mm. and they can't take a proper assessment. So after things die down, well, they will now do a proper assessment to know to but have the right The figure. community is not letting them come in. in. Yes, higher. that's where the problem Sorry, I didn't get is. Right. No, so what I'm saying is it's likely the numbers will be much higher, higher. than yes, has been reported, yeah. So I also have one more story from yeah. there. The Port Harcourt serial killer. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, so um, he's pleaded uh, guilty. So he says he's guilty, but there are 10 counts. Mm. And he says uh, he's taking nine of them. The 10th one, he said the 10th girl uh, is pleading not guilty uh, because he didn't kill her. He only tied her legs and hands and left her on the bed. Right. So he's refusing to take responsibility for that 10th one. That can be massive. But he's accepted the nine counts oh, out okay. of 10. It's, it's, it's a positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in a country... Well, yes, in yeah. a country where there's a ge ge general lawlessness and there's mm -hmm. a lot of gaps in policing and, and the fact that, you know, we have a state of insecurity across so many areas, I think it's, it's a little light mm -hmm. that um, this guy was caught before so he, yes, yeah. you know, he could carry that's on. Good. So that's a yeah. very good thing. Yeah. Could we talk a bit about the South? African um, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Issue. I think it's actually um, also in Vanka. Let me take Vanka headlines. Okay. State of Lagos roads terrible, says Jack on Day. Hmm. Um, the Azani Ali Kola Luku temporary forfeits properties to federal government. Mm -hmm. um, National Assembly to de 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 register 85 political parties. ICPC declares ex presidential aide Obono Abla wanted. And I think that's the story. But let's take the South African story very quickly. Go ahead. Mm. So I think um, it shouldn't surprise people, in my view, that these xenophobic attacks are happening again. There's a fundamental structural problem in South Africa. And the attacks are a manifestation of some of those problems. And until the South African government deals with that problem, mm. we're, going to ha we're going to continue to see 
essentially um, hostility towards right. foreigners. Mm. South Africa is essentially a country full of broken men, mm. right? Um, what apartheid did was to strip black men of their humanity. Indeed. Um, it, it made them essentially a husk of mm. themselves. It took away their identity. Well, the result of it that. took away their agency. Yeah. It took away everything. So they, they became less than human right. under apartheid. Since the end of apartheid, there hasn't been any, as far as I know, effort to deal with the psychological impact of apartheid, which happened over that. generations, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have people still, you know, thinking of themselves as less. Right. And the economy of South Africa is strong, but it favors only a tiny minority of people, okay. majority of whom are white and colored. The question, therefore, is that whether we like it, so as much as we like to understand and justify why they do these things, mm. people are still dying. No, no absolutely. So, what absolutely. do we do but to what, get our people out of there? What, I, what I'm saying is that it is essential that you do not do, you see, it's very easy to be simplistic right. mm. and sort of, okay, they're killing us, let's destroy their yeah. businesses, mm. let's do this, let's do that. But what I'm saying is, if you're going to go and settle among the people, you need to kind of understand the risks that you're taking. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, common yeah. sense. Mm. You need to understand that they, 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 they can't attack the people that are really responsible for their problems, mm. the whites, the yeah. of South Africans. Yeah, yes, because they, feel they, have access yeah, because they see them, they, 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 they see them as above them. They have bought into the theory mm. and the story that these guys are superior to them. So what do they do? They also try to find somebody that they think is inferior to them. Yeah, which is and it's the immigrant. And, and it's yeah. women. That it also explains yeah. the violence right. against women. Yeah. It's a major, major right. issue. We have to move on to other stories. Mm. Um, I know that um, the former governor of Lagos State, uh, first, uh, Jack Ondeh, was, say, was saying that the rig Lagos roads are bad. Mm. He was actually at a book launch of, I think, Mr. Adedayo Duyili, Chief Adedayo Duyili. And he was there speaking, saying that the roads are bad. We can all relate. <laughs> yes. But um, what was interesting was that Nupeng was responding, saying that uh, Lagos State government was to blame, and the NPA, saying that the NPA, um, that Lagos State government was supposed to provide parking spaces, but they have not. But I spoke to um, a commissioner who said that, no, we all know that Lagos State actually had provided the parking spaces. The yes, issue they did. is that yes, they did. those trucks that parked on the roads, those who actually complied and moved to the parking spaces were, 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 were cheated of actually getting access mm. to the ports because yes. those who now parked on the road still got in. Got yes. in so before they did. So they complied, but they lost out in that. Mm -hmm. So what happens so is that it now caused again. lawlessness where everybody now refused to go to the parking spaces and that's because the task force refuse to enforce mm -hmm. what we're supposed to do to ensure that nobody parks on the road. Mm. So that's where that's the lawlessness that was happening. That Within And uh, hopefully now that Lagos State and federal government are together in the committee, hopefully they can find a way to resolve this because okay. traffic in that area is really bad. Nima complains about it every single day. Mm. And this is something that um, it's been... But I don't know if uh, many people know that actually our port is big enough. It's bigger than the ports of Kotunu and our neighbours that are so efficient. What has happened over the years is that in the usual Nigerian style, we've taken land that was meant for trucks and given them to individual businesses mm -hmm. to build tank farms yeah. within the ports. Yeah. That's what so, we're seeing. So situation. those spaces that should have been used for tankers within the ports, where they can go and park mm. and wait while they're loaded, they're now owned by private businesses, businessmen, some of the biggest businessmen in the country. Wow. I won't name names. Which makes it more But, you know, yes, the issue is that, as far as I'm concerned, um, those people should be asked to move. Mm. You know, and let's <laughs> turn the port to what it is supposed to be and what it was designed and we to do. And we build more ports. I mean, we need we Absolutely. have to, have, uh, have, this we have to build yes. more ports. It's not even just Lagos. Um, I know more ports are being, coming up. Um, yeah. Yeah. you know, they are coming up in other states and other regions of the country. So. Okay, moving on to daily trust. Nigeria's prisons remain same despite name change. Is that the story you wanted to take? Yes, that's actually the story I want to take. So Daily Trust did the investigation. You know that a few um, weeks back, we took the story Month, here. Okay. A few months back, we took the story here about the fact that the president changed the name. There's a new bill mm -hmm. from the prisons to being a correctional facility. And Daily Trust found out that even the website of Nigerian prisons still carries Nigerian prisons. And the new act hasn't been trickled. The, 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 it's just a name change. The name hasn't been changed on the website. The prisons are still congested. Um, the 
the changes that took place in the act hasn't been placed on their website. So definitely, if it's, in, if it's in the website, that means the people that are working in the prisons are not aware of what the new change means to them. And that's something we should look into. They're saying that the new act, the, the, the actions highlighted in the new act mm. cannot be implemented until they have the rights, the, the budget included in this 20... Nine, it 20, it's 20. not included in the 2019 budget. They're hoping to be included in the 2020 budget. So yeah. we're not going to see changes until next year. Yeah. Right now, it was not so included. It was just a talk shop. Well, well, it wasn't that, a talk yeah. shop. It was yeah. a proposition. Oh, it was a change God. on the press. I'm not well, I, I think that the principle behind it is essentially you want to turn prisons into places that do correction rather than yeah. punitive mm. measures, where people, when they go in and come out, they're not coming worse out criminals. worse criminals <laughs> than when they went in and that they can be useful to society. So I think that is sort of the, the principle the behind nice, it. Yeah, in principle. Too, but it has much. to be implemented properly for it. Nigerian to Tribune court seizes Mena's 23 properties. Who has that story? Nobody read Mena's story. It's all over the papers. It's yeah, but how can one human being own 23 no, properties? No, if they follow up on the story, yes. so they had, we, I, I took the story um, last week where they said that they identified the 23 buildings, but now it's been, uh, it's been seized. So we, we, they found out that he, they traced the funds he had and how he paid for some of them in cash, mm. 100 million naira cash at a point for one building. Mm. So this entire set of 23 buildings now are, are now being forfeited. Been but seized. there's a clause, there's temporary there. So we don't know if uh, what yeah, that actually means, they'll whether they'll give it back to him or not. Mm. Yeah, so because they temporary. said that properties forfeited pending completion of investigation against mm. him. Mm. He used his mother's late father's names, pseudo names to acquire seized properties, EFCC <sighs> alleges to be arraigned Friday for alleged two billionaire pension fraud money laundering. Hmm. My, my big frustration with some of these big headlines that um, we see around EFCC actions is that we almost seem to not have the structure and the processes to investigate properly. Mm. And so people get away with a lot on technicalities, yes. you know? Yes. Um, and yes. so you sort of kind of know they're guilty. But, but somehow, when it goes to court, it all it. unravels. Mm. And, and for me, that is really frustrating. So EFCC fails to do their own job to ensure yeah, that Yeah, I think I'd like to see a little less, um, you know, headline. Media trial. Yes, yeah. media trial. And a little bit more sort of detailed work right. that, sure. you know, okay. we only get to hear about when we have a conviction. Mm. OK, final paper, The Guardian, NLC vows to enforce new minimum wage payments. We didn't read about minimum wage. vows to enforce new minimum wage payments. We didn't read about minimum wage. Nobody has that well, story? I, the, the bid I was able to catch just before we had to go, it had to do with the fact that they insisted that they do not want minimum wage anymore. They want living wage. What does that mean? They want enough to take care of themselves. <laughs> they want all their, no matter what you earn, be, yeah. you know, have enough to take care of yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah, we get that. But we shouldn't laugh. Because, you know, people in government and people in the National Assembly are giving themselves over and above a living wage. Mm -hmm. So the Nigerian worker deserves a living wage as well, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but maybe something we should talk about because they, we, there's been an, an outcry for there to be a reduction in cost of governance. Everybody mm. was talking about it. Mm -hmm. And our, our government, uh, our president seemed to make some kind of effort towards that when he said we should remove the ESTA codes, uh, travel allowances and all that. That's like, but people are still saying that it's not enough. I can barely see it. So, but people feel that, listen, others are saying, hey, it's a step in the right direction. Mm. So it's something that's worth talking about. Do you, what, what do you think about we, that? I think he should just go a little bit further. Okay. To be honest, you know, this is these are the kind of little cosmetic changes you make if you're living in an environment in which you have a buoyant economy. Mm. Maybe at when it was a few years ago when we were growing at sort of 7 8%, 9%. You know what I mean? The yeah. economy now is very bad. Right. People are jobless. So we need something more drastic. Yes, mm. yes. They have to, they, they cannot, they cannot, their lifestyle cannot be so far apart from the people who elect them and put right. them into office. It yep. just really doesn't make sense. On that note, we have to go on a break. Now, when we come back, we discuss the issues concerning why journalists recently have been arrested and put behind bars. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thank you for staying with us so for a while now. Some journalists who have been bold enough to do investigative journalism have been allegedly been threatened or asked um, what is, sorry, they've actually been allegedly arrested and put behind bars. 
Now we ask, what is the future of journalism in Nigeria if this continues to happen? You can call and join the conversation on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. But before we go ahead, Nima just walked in the building. Mm. Woo. And I've got, I have to give you a few minutes <laughs> to tell us what happened because that your area is becoming notorious. Notorious and it's, it's more painful that there's no response. So, you know, I keep talking that, you know, we have tank farms there, we don't have a fire station. There's a possibility we might have a fire. This morning, traffic again. So they said two tra uh, tankers are blocking the way. We didn't know one has fallen and that there's, that there's a spillage. Mm. So I took a bike, I insist I parked my car and took a bike down there. And when I saw two fire trucks, I was expecting there should be like the foam, you know, something to avert or whatever is happening. But they are just there sitting there. The officials discussing, and it was just business so as usual. The fire to spark I don't understand. <laughs> so someone should, you know, they should have cordoned off properly right. and alerted people behind or create alternative way for people to get out of that place. And all the way inside, satellite is blocked like that with tankers as well. Most of them full. This is what the residents have been clamoring. This morning, they have a protest happening on the island. They are going to picket um, DPR as well. The residents are doing it on their own. And the government seems unable to regulate. What we are asking is, if you cannot take out the tank farms immediately, at least regulate the way the tankers carry yeah. this poison. This is inflammable. And the government and has said that the task force are the ones that, well, well people, are we saying, speak, not, the people are saying that tax force are actually not doing the job. Only Nupeng are the tax force we see there. And I see money exchanging hands yeah. go ahead. That's, That's all that happens so, there. So Nima, I think we need to have a show maybe next week, Wednesday, we bring people in your community. Exactly. As the audience. As audience. Let's educational. invite members of your community will, to come here you. as the audience. And we now have somebody from maybe DPR, Nupeng, sure. uh, from Lagos State Government. Let's, let's have a from conversation. The the on this. Do you agree? Yeah. We need, we need, because do. this is happening too often. often. So we need people from your community to come and tell us what's happening. We should have done um, the disaster. Not yes. to wait until something goes wrong Thank and then we start me. operating right. rush, rush. Thank you. All right, so going on to today's topic. Mm -hmm. We've had people like Agba Jalingo, people like Jones Abiri. Recently. Uh, recently they've been arrested. Fisayo, now, Fisayo recently was um, actually um, went undercover, according to him, and to bring out some exposed happenings behind uh, in, in prisons, Nigerian mm -hmm. prisons. Then he alleged that they were, um, they were seeking to arrest him, the police were seeking to arrest him, although the police had actually refuted this yesterday, mm -hmm. saying that they're not doing anything of the sorts because journalists are supposed to be their partners in this. We understand that. However, it's important to also discuss the fact that lots of journalists in recent times have been arrested for one thing or the other. And if this, con if this trend continues, it begins to... Um, make it come across as though the government does not want to uphold it's the to constitutional... Come across, it's it already across. comes across like uh, this government in the past eight, um, four years has shown a body language of zero tolerance for criticism. That's been the body language of the government. So they came in with the hype from social media, and suddenly they, they feel like the social media um, is now being used to lead to terror, supporting terrorism. They are causing um, that there's hate speech online. This is the same social media that you used to get into power. So I, this is a democracy. Let mm -hmm. me start from there. Mm -hmm. And in a democracy, the journalists, this, the, the, the body of the media everywhere, social media, on, I mean, those that are working online or proper um, broadcasters mm -hmm. are contributory to holding the government accountable. When you shush the media, you shush the only platform for people to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And we are as well as good as having a, a military system. So, so what we have now is a case where, it, let, let's, let's say, okay, show your boss case was alleged allegation. Um, the one for Agba Jalingo, someone who I respect so much, for always speaking the truth and protesting against bad governance, is being arrested for conspiracy to cause unrest and conduct likely to cause breach of peace because he made a report that there's a 500 million scam in Cross River. Mm. So now he's so being arrested. Yeah, yeah. Every right is limited. Every right under the constitution is qualified in one way or the other. So the right to, to press freedom as well must be qualified. What I expect government to do, and they do that already, because we as Satellite Town got invited by the DSS, so we are being investigated <laughs> for protesting what they do in our area. 
So I know that when a person makes this kind of report, Agbajalingo made, the one Fisayo Shoyombo made, if you must have anything to say against it, you investigate it for that to see if it's a lie. Fortunately, these guys have, for Fisayo Shoyombo, for instance, I still read through it again yesterday. There's a video. Mm. And, you know, they were able to show faces of people. Mm -hmm. I expect that, you know, government should not be saying we are investigating. Immediately, we should be having their side of the story mm -hmm. because this is just break. So when government comes out and says, oh, we've investigated and it's unsubstantiated, then we know the, the, the journalist in question whose name is on it is in trouble because, of course, that right to press freedom is qualified. Okay, okay can I, can yeah, I, I mean... Ahead. I'm, I'm a journalist, <laughs> right? Um, so you talk over your head. <laughs> <laughs> I've had uh, cause to be questioned by DSS. Right. I've spent time with the police in the time of when I was editing Next, which was sort of mm. the leading investigative newspaper and everything. So the public right to know is sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. It is central to, the, to a democracy. Mm -hmm. um, Section 22 of the Nigerian constitution guarantees the press's right to inform mm -hmm. and to hold government accountable. Mm -hmm. So let's be clear about that. There's no, there's no, there's no room for debating that, that the, 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 the journalists have a responsibility that is constitutional mm -hmm. and they should be allowed to so, carry out their mm -hmm. duty, um, you know, without any sort of um, intimidation. But she's also right in saying that those rights are qualified. And we as journalists have a responsibility to raise the standards mm -hmm. of the work that we do. And in fact, there are conversations that are taking place um, within the industry at the moment. We are trying to see if we can self-regulate. And what self-regulation does is that it allows us to set standards and to, to use global best practice so that if you are going to report something, you're sure that you've investigated it and you're not making it up because there are rules already around libel, around defamation yes. that are also constitutional, mm -hmm. that allow people to go after you for redress. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the issue of fake news and the impact it has is real. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of those things where we have to make sure that we earn the trust of people. So, I mean, how many people actually read things now and believe it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, because we've me, had so many me, bad me, things happening. So it's, it's a two-way thing. The government cannot be arresting, yeah. Yeah. but we too have to be able to, to, to earn the respect yeah, but what, and trust uh, of totally people by you. doing our job properly. Totally mm -hmm. agree with you. But there's the part of the Constitution, I think it's Section 38, that also gives us that right of expression. Yes. Now, how do you regulate somebody's expression? You can. If that expression is always, it's always about public good. Everything we do as exactly. journalists is about public good. So, 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 so you have to understand if, if your public, if your expression is a lie, mm -hmm. and as a result of making up something, a community ends up with people getting killed. Right, right. Uh, which which right, right should take precedence? The challenge is not mm -hmm. with the journal, people that lie. And in most cases, if you check it, mm. true journalists, the mm. real journalists, mm. professionals, mm. they're not lying. No, no, I know. They're not. And, and this is not and, a, and it, and it, this is is not a justification. It's, yes, it's giving it the true journalist a bad name. Yes. Because we now, there's an assumption that because somebody creates an, a, a, a website, goes on a WordPress, creates a website, and, say, and, say, and, and, and says he's a journalist, yes. and just repost whatever they mm. see from everywhere, mm. that person is now being lumped up with those who have been doing this for years as absolutely, a profession. Absolutely. So in the case of this particular stories that were citing, mm -hmm. what their issue was, mm -hmm. was that they uncovered and I, and I agree. conspiracies yeah. and they uncovered corruption in the system. It's a different thing if it's a lie. So when we see Fisayo's pictures showing mm -hmm. what happened in the, pri in the no, prison, there's, there's when no we see videos, there's no justification no for lying. Fisayo so when not giving any threats or anything. Safe, how do we get more people to be willing to it, take that risk? Because he was here last sequence and we we're applauding him that, oh, you did a fantastic job. He's probably motivating many people in school studying journalism but to do it. interestingly, where is civil society in all this? Mm -hmm. Everybody's mom. Thank you. Everybody's keeping quiet really? because we're not really, we're not, not pushing really. it. They're shouting for Agba Jalingo. I, the only reason I knew about his arrest was because a lot of, people of civil, um, a lot of civil society have been shouting free Agba Jalingo mm. and they were making it on Twitter, it's on Facebook. Some, um, John, um, um, Joe Zabiri's case, too, has mm. been, they've been saying it over and over again. So we, they are talking, yeah. but we just need to make it more mainstream. Right. That you cannot victimize journalists that are doing their job to expose I, corruption it, in part the society. Of, part of our job as journalists has got to be to organize so that there are resources to mm. actually take on 
government mm -hmm. and to take on institutions and agencies of law enforcement when they do things that are wrong. Mm. Because the problem is that there is, there is strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. So for yes. example, when um, uh, uh, three, four years ago, when uh, Dakwa Oloriomi, the publisher of Premium Times, was arrested alongside his reporter, mm -hmm. I drafted the open letter that we wrote to Muhammadu Buhari, mm. reminding him that this is a democracy mm. and that he cannot be arresting um, journalists up and down. Now, that letter, everybody signed it, from Showore to, you know, everybody who was anybody. And I think the fact that we all came together with that sort of strength yes, united yes. meant that literally within 24 hours, Dakwa released. and his colleague were released. Mm. And what we need to do is to be a little That's bit... Fantastic. We need to be a little bit more organized in right. our response. It cannot be an ad hoc thing. Right. You know, so I'd like to see the Guild of Editors of which I'm a member, the Nigerian Union of Journalists, you know, all the bodies that represent um, um, people who risk their lives so that the, okay. the, the Nigerian is able to be an informed citizen. Mm -hmm. We need to get together and agree on a strategy for dealing with these things when they happen. Right. But we also, whether we like it or not, need to up our own standards. Right. We must do journalism that can stand right. up to scrutiny, right. that cannot be accused of not fulfilling um, um, the, the general rules of balance, right. you know, of right to fair hearing, all the things that are important when you are doing journalism properly. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, we all agree that there's, so, there's been a subtle deterrence in proper journalism, so people are now looking after their pockets. Mm. You have bloggers coming up and are just concerned about breaking a story that, you know, would favor or they can and actually they can buy trade. a story. So, they, they so when is a story out there you buy? And, yeah. you know, there was this... I wanted to we want to say something. No, we had a conversation right. yesterday because I stopped by at the hospital and we had a conversation myself and my doctors who took care of me at the time and they were wondering why these things are just happening blatantly and we don't have a sector talking about it, mm -hmm. accusing, of course, press because I was supposed to be press that, you know, we're not doing enough. And, you know, I kept saying on this platform, on your view, I don't think anybody here comes here, you know, afraid of anything to say. It's just usually when the bloggers that you see out there break out news, the fake news and all that, they break news that are paid for most times. Mm. And this is the kind of thing that you get. So somebody will think, why put my head there and go and end up like a show warrior? Why, why don't I just get paid and take exactly. it and live a so good life? people are protecting so we need, themselves. We need to check that. It's very important so that people start to put their focus on the general good because eventually what goes around comes around. You see, the thing is, the reason I keep talking about standards is that there's a question of let me, trust. Let me pause you if, for a second. Yeah. I have to go on a break. Okay. When we right. come back, we'll continue this conversation. And we'll also discuss the fact that the correctional facility that's the prison service are mm -hmm. saying that they are partners with journalists. Are they really partners? Mm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to say, um, part of our, what we need to do is we need to organize and improve the way we do our job. Because if we do, what happens is we set ourselves apart from the bloggers, mm -hmm. from the citizen journalists, mm -hmm. and we become the trusted source that mm. people go to. Mm. And that organization also means that whether you work for a big paper like The Guardian, mm -hmm. or whether you are running a small paper in a village that is regional, you get the same level sure. of protection. Mm. So things like, I mean, during the break, she was talking about things like insurance. Mm -hmm. In most places, if you send journalists out, when I was at the BBC, every trip I took, I was guaranteed certain things, including insurance. So if anything happens to me, I knew that I'll be okay and the family will be okay and all of that. We don't do that. So our professional, our publishers do not put the money that they make from journalism back into the, into the profession. It's very bad. And our, our journalists are forced to make a living basically getting money from people that they cover. Right. And it's not going to work, right. you know. So, so, yeah. so, so I was going to go to the part of the fact that where the law enforcement officer was saying that we're supposed to be partners, that they trust that we were supposed to be on their own side, where for us to have that cohesion in, in, in ensuring um, the protection of lives and property, 
that we must, as journalists, work with the police. Now, unfortunately... Not if they're the ones committing the crimes. Yeah, exactly. And so, we've heard that many times before, Murayo. They make us, they guilt trip us. We had a meeting one time like that, and somebody was saying that hey, when we make, when we say, the things we say on this platform is aggravating people. We are making tension high, and we are, uh, we are causing um, strife in the hearts of people. I said, is what we're saying true? or false. That's the, the focus test. should be on if what is being said is true or false. If the allegations, if the investigation by Fisaya is true, don't focus on whether the journalist is supposed to support you. Focus on cleaning the debts within Clean. your system. Okay. Good morning. Are you there? Yeah. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Good morning, morning Morayo. Morning. Good morning to all the other ladies there. Morning. Yes, morning. And uh, good morning, Kaderia Amal. Morning, sir. Uh, you see, we are very proud of T we are very proud of TVC, and we are proud of your view, Morayo's program. Morayo, thank you for this. Thank you for bringing Madam uh, straight talk to this uh, program today. Mm -hmm. Kaderia is a great gift to Nigeria. Yes, yes. Oh, and I want so to much, encourage sir. her to continue with her good work. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank we you. We are very thank proud you. of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. God right. bless your husband, God bless your family. Thank you very Thank much, you. Thank you. So the, the first gag that we have as journalists is that when you attend certain meetings to push a cause again, they say, no, no journalist, no press. So we once attended a meeting on this, my tank farms again, and the moment everybody had gotten him, even when I went for the DSS, the same thing. The first, the first thing, they first of all restricted only me, because I was, of course, press. And then they did their routine, and the community said, kept screaming citizen. that she's a resident. Mm. She has a stake before they allowed me in. Mm. And you know, uh, some, some people would demand my phone. Some people would say, okay, come in there, but we don't want. And then they'll pay particular attention to you trying to buy you over by being unnecessarily nice. Mm. So what I would expect is that when I call you that your, the situation continues, you pick my call. And you don't pick my call just to tell me, and we'll be visiting when, of course, you've pre-briefed them and they are not there. So your mm -hmm. situation report will be that, I know you didn't meet tankers there, but we live there. And when we call you that they are there, they are there. Mm -hmm. We see them every right, day. Let me take this call, Mark Kuti. Like Shola, are you there? Thanks for calling. Hello, good morning. Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, see, I think all of us as a journalist need to come together to fight this issue. Hello? Yeah, we are we're listening. We're listening. Okay. We as a journalist, we have to come together to fight this issue. There's no sincerity of purpose mm. within the government and the agency of government. They're actually there to protect their own selfish interests, not the interests of journalists. Yeah. Mm. As the earlier speaker has actually said, the issue of the uh, Guild of Editors, NUJ, and all the subsidiary and the crime beat themselves. We need to come together and mm. speak with one voice. Right. It's a teamwork. Right. Government is not actually there for us. Right. Mm. We should be the ones to fight for ourselves and get freedom from all these people. Thank you very much, Shola. We have a few tweets. Go yes, ahead. we have lots of tweets. Go ahead. Um, Global says, journalists who expose corrupt officials, either private or public, should be rewarded, not tormented. Please tell um, Kaderia Ahmed how, how can I reach her? Her email is welcome. Um, Omar Bolaon says, the rise, of, the rise of fake news needs to be checked seriously ASAP. Otherwise, Nigerians will be thrown into avoidable conflagration. Journalists must be ready to own whatever they push, mm -hmm. whatever information they push out with efficient, sufficient evidence to back up um, back it up should your unexpected happen. Apun okay, says the government is negotiating with bandits and is incarcerating journalists and citizens. It's a pity. Okay, but can, can we understand government's position with the proliferation of hate speech, fake news out there? Okay, let's, let's say it's a fake news. Yes. It's primarily available on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. So if you see fake news, it's normally WhatsApp, mm -hmm. it's normally things like Facebook, mm -hmm. it's normally Instagram and Twitter. The job of regulating that yes. is not of journalists, mm -hmm. and it's you're not well, going to. It's, you're, it's part. No, hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Mm -hmm. So, so what you need to do is the the, the tech companies mm. need to be in a conversation okay. around how to put in regulations exactly. that make this Which much I think harder. Is already and in works. fact, on the international mm -hmm. level, right. that conversation is already taking place. That's why you get you know governments summoning people mm -hmm. that are in so charge of yeah, Twitter, yeah, that right, are in charge it. of Facebook, and all that to come and have conversations. So because they understand that. that. This is across borders. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I insist, 
not every blogger is a journalist. Yeah. Can we stop conflating yeah. the two? I think we, we get that very but We agree. But yeah. we agree. But I see, agree. And the point I wanted to make is that we've seen irresponsible journalism I agree. across board concerning hate speech, people having conversations that can actually trigger. And the rules are there well, to deal with exactly. that. Exactly. We so have a looking rules way. for life. They arrest a journalist that produces fake news or a journalist that is carrying hate speech. We will sit down here and talk stand stand about it yeah. against them. And if you have a newspaper, um, house that you work with. Right. Of course, that person, that newspaper house becomes liable for editing and putting out that news on behalf of the writer. Mm. So that is even easy to deal with. What is it, what government is already doing as regards hate speech on social media is what I wanted to talk about because the Minister for Information, like Mohammed, at the... There's a cyber before, like, They were already started that sensitization ca mm, uh, right, campaign. campaign. So before you share a news on WhatsApp, you have to verify where it's coming from. And now, even the tech companies have assisted. WhatsApp, for instance, no longer allows you just share news. Yeah. So you, yeah. once you share a news, it comes out forwarded, so it right. means that you're not the source. Yeah. And they can link it to the very beginning right, yeah. of it. It can be Let investigated. Let me take this call. It's been holding for a while. Good morning. Are you there? Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Uh, my name is Aladapo. Aladapo, go ahead, please. Uh, why I have the scheme and the mode of conversation, I think it's fantastic. But I need to, uh, I need to expand on the fact that journalism in Nigeria does not actually portray the immigration of the country as an entity. We oftentimes uh, portray it as if we are always against some sector of the government. Yes, you have to check the government. But if you don't uh, portray the country as an entity that, um, that has moral value, and every day when you open the pages of newspaper, killing, Boko Hara, right. stolen phone, every day, 74, um, 54 weeks. That's what you see. But I think it needs to be balanced right. all the time. Right. And it rises, it, 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 it falls on the hand of the writer. Okay. It's, all right. Thank you very much, Aladapo. Let me take a hang in them. Let me take a few comments from our audience. Journalism Go ahead, please. The facts. Yeah. Go ahead. Journalism, I think, is part of. Uh, our rights as democratic nation. So we, 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 whereby we as citizens can air our view. If there is no journalism, if there is no way where we can get to the government, I think we can do it. It's high time we Nigerians begin to see it as a freedom where we can speak our mind because democracy we know is for the people, is yeah. a law for the people, by the people, and for for us to know yeah. our rights. I believe we can go through the media, whereby there is no safety okay. for anybody. It's mm. dangerous. Mm. Mm. But it's high time point, we but take but our point. Thank you very much. By the now, it's important to know that citizens do have their right to express, which is backed up by the Constitution. But a journalist is trained. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the, a trained journalist now has a responsibility to you to ensure giving that they're giving you giving the facts. right information and factual information. Not sugar so as much as citizens, but also we found that citizens have actually abused that right of expression to harbor and to, uh, um, to bring out a lot of fake news that's causing issues for, 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 for the government right now. So that's where the problem is. Well, let me not give you an example yes. with Punch newspaper. So there was a, um, yes, the, Vanguard, sorry. There was an editorial on the pre, uh, vice president around what was happening at the, in the house at the time that broke. And immediately the vice president threatened that, you know, this was wrong and this, they issued immediately an apology the next day, front page. So this is what news, mainstream newspapers do. It's not like, you know, there's a problem and we don't have solutions. Right. What we cannot understand is that when somebody does a detailed, you know, investigation that exposes a major corruption, the type of which we cannot understand that Agba Jalingo did, that government officials, this size of corruption is happening, we have them, you know, being arrested or, you know, being That's investigated. That's where we have the problem. Okay. Let me take a few more comments. All the problems, we already have solutions. Okay. You know, a few more comments a as we round up on this. Hello, go ahead. My name is Caleb Royal Nzola. I, I want to say this: like uh, journalists are, are blessing to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If not uh, because of them, I, I will tell you that we might not be even be knowing what is going on in this country. Mm -hmm. And I want to agree with uh, the discourse and the conclusion that uh, there is need for all journalists, there is need for bodies to come together 
and have a one and have one voice. Let's take let me take Asu as an example. If Adimbi they don't have a body, some of them might just be agitated for different points. Mm -hmm. right. Even though they are not performing to expectation by some people, but I think their body has been able to agitate for their interests, common interests. Right. I think the journalists yeah. should have such to Thank fight for others. Thank you very much. Others. Fantastic. Let's take a few more tweets. So, Lawan Sonia says, interesting topic this morning. Corrupt individuals in government would always see journalists as enemies. I agree with Kadaria. We should self-regulate and care for ourselves. The guys at press um, attack.org are doing well. Um, Can um, Vituk says that this is the reason we... That is the reason we find you find them. The aforementioned agencies looking for ways to shut down the freedom of press in a democratic society. If this fails, then the system should be called to question. Okay, I'm well, on did the clarification. I said, don't stereotype by saying this government, referring to Buhari or APC administration. Agba Jalingo's case is by the Cross River State government, just like a few other uh, guys' cases. A Cross River and Cross River isn't an APC state. You couldn't, you could you could have said, well, politicians, not PMB. I think he was trying to correct you, tweeting at you. Okay, so as we round up on that, I think we've already agreed that journalism is key to ensure that we have the right facts mm -hmm. and information out there. However, we need to self-regulate to ensure mm -hmm. and have one voice, have a body that actually defends and upholds that constitutional right um, um, promised by the Constitution for every journalist out there. Any other final words on this before I round up? Not see criticism as, as an, an attack. attack. Whenever we say something that we see is wrong, doesn't mean we're and attacking the And citizens want to see government investigate. If we bring out issues, we want to see government actually follow through. If you're going to call us partners indeed, mm. when we bring us an issue, instead of arresting us, deal with the issue, focus on the message, and then we know that you're being objective. So My own just to, yeah. Nigeria is such a great nation. Oh. Nigeria is such a great nation that, you know, that is just... Um, I, I, let me not say bedeviled by people who are so pessimistic and the way of life of those people need to, correct, to be corrected de by themselves. We like to say leaders, leaders, but when we look into it, Nigerians, what, who, which, which people did the video expose in the prisons? Nigerians who have created a system that mm. continues to oppress and suppress us. So yeah. we should stand right. up, no matter how many times we are being arrested or gagged, or, we should continue to put our voice to something that right. is good because eventually it comes struggle. around. Can I want to say one quick thing? Yeah, just, just, just I, 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 what I don't understand is how the average policeman or the average prison warden doesn't understand that by breaking the law, essentially they're doing themselves in. Exactly. Because sooner or later, that thing that they have created comes back to haunt them. Exactly. And you know, you know, if you're taking bribe on the road, if you're, it's, it's all one way or the other, it has an impact. Thanks, but yes. we have dropped on that. When we come back, we'll discuss mobile classrooms. Have you heard that before? Stay mm -hmm. with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Welcome back. So before we talk to our guests, we need to inform you that TVC Communication is hosting this year's BON Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. So we have with us Ade Doja, Salam Adeni, and Ola Awakon on standby to tell us what is happening right there. Yeah, thank you, Murayo. This is the 18th annual general meeting and the 72nd uh, General Assembly of uh, Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. And TVC is hosting this for the first time. I'm Ade Doja. Salam Adeni. And I have my colleague here. Ola Awakon. Okay, this year's theme is going to focus on a Nigeria digital transition, a panacea for economic growth. What this means is that the old way of receiving signal, television signal, uh, will be moved away to a digital format. And that is what uh, experts in the broadcast community will be discussing here this morning. Hola. We hope to have um, a robust um, discussion here today 
because uh, digitization has been the in thing as far as uh, broadcasting is concerned. And uh, we're looking forward to all the you know, uh, managers of uh, broadcast media houses who will be present here today. And the discussion will be anchored by um, Mr. Shola Taylor, who is the Secretary General of Commonwealth Tele uh, Telecommunications Organization. So it's, 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 it's going to be an exciting time as um, at all the you know, managers of uh, broadcast media houses will be here. The themes for the, the, this um, annual general meeting have always been you yeah. know, on point. Looking at um, the, the previous one during the election, which was on um, election coverage and um, responsible journalism. It was also apt because that was a period of uh, you know the general election in the country that was last year. This year we are looking at digitization. We are looking at Nigeria digital transition, the panacea for economic growth. We would understand that um, you know the media industry play you know a pivotal role as far as you know national development is concerned. So we're looking forward to having a very wonderful time out today. Exactly, exactly, and um, in no time. All other empty seats you're saying here will be filled with um, delegates. Already they've been arriving. The chairman of Bond is here already. Morayo. Thank you very much, Adi Doja. We'll be coming back to you before the end of the show to find out how the conversation has started. But good to know that it's, I mean, that, that's a project that I've been so passionate about for many years. That migrating to digital platform is something that I've worked on. And I'm really happy that finally the conversation is starting and very soon we'll all migrate and we'll go from analog to digital. That, that, that means a lot of um, benefits for our viewers. But let's welcome our, our guests. Uh, lots of students, including adults, are at the verge of not going back to school because they're either ashamed or they cannot bear to be in the same environment as other younger counterparts. On the show today, we have a digital audiovisual app expert, Mr. Hakim Salami, to enlighten us on how mobile classroom works. You can join the conversation on 0708066814. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Mm. Welcome, sir. Yeah, okay. So when I heard mobile classroom, I had no idea what that means. Could you please tell us? Well, Mobile Classroom is, uh, is an application that uh, was recently launched in Nigeria to, to provide a correctional uh, approach hmm. to Nigeria, the vacuum in Nigeria education system. Hmm. Because uh, we realize that there have been mass failure in public examinations. And uh, what is majorly responsible for this is uh, the inability of the student uh, not being taught at their own pace. Hmm. Fantastic. So we assemble students of different background, different uh, ideology in the same class, and we are teaching them at a particular pace. Mm. So they cannot come along. Mm -hmm. Some students need the opportunity to take a lecture more than two times before they can understand. Mm. Wow. So there is a need for a flexible device, mm. channel, for mm. them to retake lecture as many times as possible for them to be able to understand. <laughs> Because personal, I, I, I just, I'm a little bit confused. Is it an app on a phone, um, or what is it? And what, it's what, a what? Okay, or is a physical thing? And it's what, physical what thing. is it? Tertiary education? Is it secondary education? What is it? Okay, it's, a, it's an application that can be downloaded from Play Store. Right. So you have it on your phone. Okay. Then you click on any subject of your choice, and the teacher appears to teach you. Ah. Wow. wow! Across the phone. Wow. <laughs> because I have been dealing recently. With the girl that helps me at home, we've been dealing with how to do exams. And I think that going to school doesn't work for her. Because, you know, she sits in a classroom, comes back, and there's an attitude to it. So, and she's always with the phone. So you've just given me a, so, a solution. Well, I what, what, what I would like to know is, yeah. if, for instance, is it targeted towards passing exams? Or, you know, it's targeted towards having knowledge? Because an average Nigerian secondary school older can pass exams. They can go with so you understand what I mean? But you know, to have the knowledge, to be able to apply it in any level or any phase is what the problem is. I would like to see what the goal of this kind of classes is for. Okay, I think uh, it's the same, the agenda, the objective of the main classroom, the conventional mm -hmm. classroom, the same thing that we have in mind for building this application, just to address knowledge generally, not just to pass mm -hmm. examination. So like in the application now, Let's say you want to study English language. You see English language lecture. This we have done in accordance so to Western Council syllabus. And you also see English language YEC pass questions. Mm. 
So if you actually want to study why pass questions, you click on any year and the teacher begins to teach you. And if you are looking at the lecture side of it, then you choose any topic of your choice and you are learning. So it's not just to pass examination, but to actually pass, to pass knowledge. knowledge. Exactly. So um, I f I, I'm reading a book, and the person who wrote the book has um, is, is a weird style of learning. And for a long time, he felt that he was dumb. Mm. But he realized that he needed to read something almost 20 times, the same thing. A sheet of paper that I can read and probably be able to tell you what it's about, he would need to read it like 20 times, able to give you the story. And because the educational system did not give him the flexibility of exposure to the information 20, 20 times, times, he was graded dumb. Mm. So, and I, and, I, and I think we need to change that paradigm to say that, mm -hmm. to help people understand that if you don't get it once, it doesn't mean you will never get it. Mm -hmm. You just need to repeat. And that's what your platform exactly. is giving yeah. opportunity for. But um, Kadeva asked a specific question. So is it, is it only for secondary school? school and does it cover all the subjects mm -hmm. because I know that I'm a science student and there's some things that you just can't watch to learn if you want if you are you need to have the map you need to plot it in physics you need to draw those things out so how do you do that well what we have done is uh, the application is for is beyond secondary school but we actually started from senior secondary school category oh, okay. and we have a professional courses too like ICANN, CIPM is wow. even there. Mm. We have an international exam for GMA, TOEFL, SAT, IET. Mm. So they are already in the habitation now. So uh, but I think uh, the reason why we have started with the senior secondary school category is because we realize that uh, the way the Nigeria education system is being structured, there has been much concentration on the, the, the foundation, the primary education. So, and uh, as a result of this, we are not preparing these students for, at the senior secondary school level, they are going to the public. They should be prepared in um, a way. I, I, I like the idea, but I wouldn't say I totally, I'll, I'll probably advise mm -hmm. on a different approach because we need to get children to the point where they are solving problems. So what I would like to see in your own app is where Children who are having difficulties understanding lectures, maybe either because of the language, mm -hmm. the methodology, is simplified. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the same way a Chinese man learns English or, or a Chinese man learns physics, he's probably communicated in his local mm -hmm. language, where he understands it. An app that breaks down, somebody goes to uh, whose language is Yoruba in, in the house. It's not very fluent in, in, in mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. He's now being taught English or physics or biology, and he can't really grasp now there's an app that kind of translates or trans, trans, trans is it translates? Or I'm teaches saying? in the mother tongue. In the mother tongue. Mm -hmm. That for me, it would be more impactful such mm -hmm. that we actually have people who are gaining knowledge to solve problems. Mm. I think uh, the fundamental thing we have considered is that uh, most of the learning uh, platform available presently on YouTube, the teachers there are not local. Right. Mm. And most of our students find it difficult to even understand mm. their phonetics. Mm. So in this, we have researched into, and we, we, the teachers that have taught on our applications are Nigerians. Yes. Well, so okay. this, we have been able to encourage local content. So, so and I'm the actually... syllabus we have treated is West African. That is, this is for Africa, okay. not just for Nigeria. Fantastic. So exactly. this syllabus that you just mentioned is what we have the problem with. The syllabus that we do, the curriculum and syllabus that we use already as sometimes seem outdated because the world is looking to artificial intelligence and a lot of other things like that. How improved are your teachers when it comes to sciences, for mm -hmm. instance, on uh, robotics and you know other arti artificial intelligence uh, courses that you know people are doing now? That uh, uh, well, as a matter of fact, this is a going good. concern. Mm -hmm. So this is just the beginning of it, and it's an application. So mm -hmm. as time goes on, we'll be adding more value and be improving on the. Is there a stage where? Okay. <laughs> so if, no, we, if you download, do you pay? No, if you download the application now. Mm -hmm. So at least for but the first... Supposed to, because, because it's on a paid for segment. Yeah. So I can't, I, can't, I can't allow you to but are you, go are further. They, are they paying for it? Yes, they are paying, but yeah. very so, affordable. So, it's so, very okay. affordable. Okay, okay. So we're not, we're not, we don't plan to mention the... Is there a, posi a possibility of a student emailing, interfacing with a teacher on that platform such that the problem Moriah cited where a student is having difficulty, somebody can actually watch for 20 times and still not get it because... Of course, the person is but interpreting the mother tongue. With Yoruba language. So if the students can actually state what their problem is by email to a teacher and it could be looked into for a, a particular student, is it uh, possible? Yes, what we have done on the application, there is a question and answer section, mm -hmm. whereby if you are not clear on a particular topic, you drop your question. So there is, a, there is an administrator that compiled all the questions and the teachers went back into the studio and solved those questions. Yeah. Let so, me take this call. Thank you very much. Let me take this call from Ilorin. Good morning. Are you there? 
Yeah. Hello. Thanks for uh, calling. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah. Um, I want to talk about the previous topic. Uh, hello. Hello. Go on. Uh, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> John, you are live. Please go ahead. I think you've lost Maybe the line is dodgy. <laughs> it's a long distance. Right. You have a few tweets. Yes, we <laughs> do. Um, okay. Abayami says that there is. The truth is that there is no difference between the blogger that stays online and the journalist and blogger both, both collect and disseminate information. That's according to Abayami. Mm -hmm. Leto says that, um, and those who stand for something are afraid that in terms of journalism, the journalists who stand for something are now afraid of their life. Um, Chibok is saying, you're the best, Mrs. Kadari Ahmed. God bless mm -hmm. you for all the good work oh, you're thank doing. You. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, lots of, you have lots there. of fans. Oh, Let yeah, me take yeah, this yeah. call from Suri mm -hmm. Thanks for calling. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. Go ahead, Hello. please. Yeah, uh, uh, today, uh, to my people there, please, uh, the man in front of you that is uh, telling us mm -hmm. the, about this education, mm -hmm. he made mention of something that I don't understand. He said that uh, they are starting that program from secondary because the primary, maybe mm -hmm. the primary is the key or something like that. I would have loved them to start from primary mm -hmm. and they to get some very good teachers, mm -hmm. primary school teachers, especially from public private school to do that thing for them as well. Mm. Because we say that we get at home. The foundation matters a lot. Yeah. If the foundation yeah. is good, mm -hmm. they will see that all the words about they are saying now, it will be easier for them. Mm. It's very easier. Thank you very and much, Mr. Jimon. It's very important. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your comment. So your app, like you mentioned, can work, help with them homeschooling, for instance. So if yeah. your app dealt with primary upwards, of course, you know, it's building the foundation. Course, Someone is asking on Twitter that what's the name of the app again? It's mobile. No, 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 no. It's not coming. Okay, sorry. <laughs> We've been talking about it. <laughs> I don't know. You can't it's mention the name of the app. All right. So, right. <laughs> what are you doing towards the, uh, you know, starting from the Let's take more tweets, please, quickly. Ad, um, Adenuga uh, Larry says, in exposing ills in society, journalists must consider the first security and national interest rather than rushing to publish and letting the right authorities to investigate and deal with the wrong one must be explored first. Guild of Editors must work on this in, na in the nation's interest. Anyone and I think, no, I, you know, yeah. we, I, I really no, think, no, I, 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 I think that we, none on this topic. Mm -hmm. I, I think that we need to address this because mm -hmm. it's one of the things I mentioned that, um, because, where, how do we draw the line between national interest and informing the audience? Mm -hmm. So if I find out that the hospitals are giving fake drugs, example, Weird. It's not true before they now say I'm saying something. But if, if I find out that as a journalist, my first obligation shouldn't be to inform the audience, the people public. that are the public. That it should be I to inform the author authorities no, there. No, 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 mm. no, no. Your first responsibility as a journalist is to the public. Okay. Okay, but there's no reason why the responsibilities cannot intersect. Okay. You cannot allow people to keep taking, to use your example, fake drugs mm. because you want to allow the hospital to rectify yes, it. What mm. if people die while you are waiting for them mm -hmm. to rectify mm -hmm. it? So the public has a right to then know there and then. Is that should have taken it to the, no. uh, to the police no. commission that's, that's, alone? That's not and, his job. And his it's job most likely that, that is not his is job. Killed. His okay. job, his responsibility so is to the public. What he's saying. Is to give people, you, you see, the, the public right to know is sacrosanct in a democracy mm -hmm. because that is what gives us, <laughs> we, we, that gives us an opportunity to be informed citizens. Because, you know, a democracy doesn't work if the citizens are not active. Mm -hmm. yes. We know it's a two-way thing. You, right. you, you have to right. elect, you have to do all those sorts of Kadeira, things. Kadera, we live in Nigeria. It's even more possible that, you know, you take a, an information of that magnitude to the authorities first. It dies there. But let me take this call. Salawa, are you there? Thanks for calling. Oh, oh sorry, sorry for sorry. keeping you. All sorry. right, so as we wrap up on this, mm -hmm. um, uh, is this for, ad can adults do this? People who, for whatever reason, education. didn't get into mm. um, school or for their home and they would like to learn, can they just download this and then begin to learn? Yes, the, classes? Uh, the mobile classroom app is for everybody. Okay. And uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it works more for many Nigerians that are out of schools okay. for one reason or the other. Okay. Let's say, for instance, uh, like 1.6 million students sat for JAM in 2018 wow. and only 40% passed. One million feet. Mm. And these people fail because they are assumed not to have acquired the required knowledge to pass that examination. And they are already out of school. But there's no guarantee your app is going to make them pass anyway. There's no, no guarantee. But yeah. Yeah. There's no guarantee that your app is going to make them pass. Yes, what the, they have not acquired the needed knowledge. Mm. That means they need to retake 
the, the lecture, the topics, mm -hmm. and they are out of schools already. Mm. So do, is there any provisions, if not now, in the future, for you to be able to track how successful your app has been? Mm -hmm. So will you start tracking the number of students that have used your app mm -hmm. and have either passed or failed so that you can... Maybe later in the future, we plan to introduce assessments. Uh -huh. uh, okay. okay. Let me take a Olabi. Olabi, are you there? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I just downloaded the app, but I want to tell the gentleman in the studio that your suspicion is very, very on the eye now. Because so if I am subscribed for a month, I should be able to watch any video, but you are limited. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. That's Thank you very much. Let me take a comment from the audience. Go ahead, <laughs> sir. Yes, my question is that this app, you know, teaching is communication. When somebody clicks on it, is it the app? Will it be communicating with the person or the person just be reading what the yeah. app is displaying? Is it like video or just an audio that will be written down to so, somebody? So, so let me tell you, so there are actually apps you can actually download. Where mm -hmm. You get a teacher mm -hmm. who is teaching you. So they, they are, there are pauses where you now take some, um, some class work. There'll be, there, this is done in a way that would be user-friendly mm -hmm. for the user. So it's a video. I mm -hmm. think I've not downloaded the app. I have no idea. Oh, but there are yeah. many but others online. Of videos that you can actually well, see. Is there a way to bring down the cost? Because the students are concerned. Yeah. Ajita is saying this is a good innovation. As learners, we have the seers, the hearers, and the feelers. Does this assist these types of learners? And speaking of learning pace, does this app help, help move along with other students' pace? What kind of, does it, you know, is it peculiar to, does it work with people who have different some visuals, audio, whatever, ways of learning? That's what so, she's asking. Did you get the question? Yeah, the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are different people with different, different learning, learning modalities. Mm -hmm. Some are visual learners. Mm -hmm. So whatever presentation you're doing must have pictures exactly. attached to that yes, learning. Yes. And some are auditory, some are kinesthetic. They need mm -hmm. to touch the stuff. So, mm -hmm. however, because this is video, do you have um, visual elements that will support mm -hmm. each class that they are learning? Exactly. We have a lot of visual elements in it. Thank exactly. you very much, sir, for coming. It's a pleasure, pleasure having yeah. you. Thank you, Kadaria mm -hmm. Ahmed, for being on the show. Thank, thank you. you. Have to yeah. no, you. Yeah, thank you. I have to quickly say, you have huge fans all over the world. <laughs> and my, one of my closest friends, Regina Okafor, uh -huh. is watching us right now in London. Uh -huh. And she said, I have to give you guys her love. Oh, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and Nina Inikoyi and Nina also Inikoyi. says hello. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much. You have to come back. Hopefully you come back. Uh, one of these days, yes. <laughs> so thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. And to our amazing audience. Thank you for coming. And to get there with the rain. There's our cake, cool. Yeah, give us cake today. All right, thank, thank you. you so much. We always love having you on Wednesdays. I mean, it, it, it's not listen, easy. it makes us really, really <laughs> appreciative of the fact that we have audience that love the show. So much. And even because, even the, the, the rain today, and and the, even with the rain, you still made it. Full thank audience. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.